If you want to create great looking, well-proportioned scene layouts in Ecamm Live, then stick around because I've got a great video and also a free downloadable template for you as well to help you with that. Now, this is where I would normally go into my little intro sequence, but I don't have one today. So uh, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec because <laughs> I have uh, basically just started from scratch with a new profile in Ecamm Live so that we can uh, build this all out together and I can show you exactly how it works. Now there was a little hint there that I said profile because I am doing all this in the Ecamm Live beta at the moment version 3.9 uh, which hopefully should be coming onto the uh, mainstream version uh, at some point in the not too distant future uh, but for now I am using the beta and this is the reason for this has come about because of all of the great new features that are coming into version 3.9 uh, that allows you to create great looking scenes without the need for sort of graphical overlays with little holes cut out for where our cameras and screen sharing are going to be like we used to have to do in the olden days <laughs> before this beta. So uh, that's, this is what I'm uh, here to show you is how I've basically done this and the template that I've created that allows me to create these scenes and make them all look uh, uh, well proportioned and uh, and uh, relatively attractive in terms of the uh, the layouts that I've got uh, and then you can take this download and use it yourself. Now if you aren't on the beta don't worry these things these features will be coming to the mainstream at some point in the not too distant distant future but also the actual template you can equally just download it and use it in something like uh, PowerPoint or um, Keynote if that's what you make your overlays in or any other graphical program for that matter and it's still got the same sort of proportions you could use it in there as a guide for how to lay your scenes out as well. So let me just come straight into my screen sharing then and I'll uh, I'll explain a little bit more because the features specifically that I'm talking about that have been added in or that are going to be in version 3.9 are um, First of all, we've got the camera overlays, which we already had, but we've also got screen sharing overlays, which makes it a lot easier. If I just come down to here, the overlays tab, we've got this little one with a screen, which wasn't in the uh, existing version of Ecamm Live, but is in the beta. Uh, and it allows us to add in a screen sharing window and we can drag and resize that. Uh, it's a lot better functionality than the old screen sharing uh, way of doing things where you had to have it as the basically the scene source, um, whereas now it can be just an overlay. And the other thing about it is you can actually have more than one of them. So I could just drag this over here uh, and have more than one of them. Why would you want to share more than one uh, screen sharing when they're both showing the same thing? Well, you've also now got cropping. So I can hold down the option key and I can crop into a different part of the, whoops a daisy, I just uh, <laughs> clicked on the wrong thing there. You can uh, basically, yeah, just crop into a different part of the scene. So if you were demonstrating two different apps or different app windows or something like that, uh, that you needed to show at the same time, then you can uh, do that like that and just crop into a different portion of the scene. Or maybe you want to show the, uh, the app itself and then a, a portion of the menu bar or something like that. There are lots of reasons why you'd want to do it. You could always before share a specific app, but it was only ever one at a time because you could only ever share, uh, have one screen sharing element at a time. Uh, and so we used to have to use NDI and things like that to work around it. So that makes screen sharing a lot easier and a lot more versatile. But the thing that is going to kill the old school overlays, to my mind, is the fact that we can now also uh, do things like adding on a border to any of our overlays. So we can add this little border like that. And we can also do rounded corners so we can add rounded corners and you can see that I'm basically choosing here uh, which specific corners I want rounded. So you can see that from here I've got the top corners rounded. There it is rounded there, square at the bottom, square at the bottom and rounded there. So it just makes it quite versatile really that you the uh, the sorts of shapes that you can make with it and uh, how you can make your scenes look. So um, this main camera here as you can see because I'm moving it around is also a camera overlay so let me just show you how uh, we might build a scene that where you wouldn't need to have those old school graphical overlays that and uh, and the reason for all of this so let me just create a different shape here uh, I'm going to create one where we've basically got the camera and the screen sharing I'm going to adjust the uh, position in fact let me just reset this one second to make it the uh, whoops daisy that's gone a bit too big now hasn't it hang on a minute <laughs> let me try this again I've just suddenly reset it and it's gone too big I'll try that again there we go I'll take this one back uh, and that is the uh, the full screen and then I'm going to change the border width so let's make that five there we go and then I'm going to drag that to make it a bit bigger and then I'm going to drag the camera over the top of it 
like that. I'm going to change that to be something like that. Uh, so that is the sort of scene that we might have had in the past <laughs> or now, in fact. Let me just add some rounded corners to that so that you can get the effect. Uh, make that all five as well. I'll come to the borders on this one, make them all rounded just for the sake of the demonstration. So uh, now we've got a shape that is similar to the sorts of shapes that we might have had before where we'd created this with a sort of uh, an image overlay and sort of had little windows popped through them for where we're going to put our screen sharing in that. But then obviously we probably would have had some sort of graphics around the outside as well. So the way that we're adding those in now is uh, we've always had this, by the way, this show in background. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag an image and I'm just going to drag and drop it. Now, when you drag and drop an image into the overlays tab, if your scene is unlocked, then it will default to being at the top of the stack in the show in current scene. And so that means that that image will only be visible in that scene. We want this to be visible in all scenes. Now, if your uh, uh, scene is locked and you drag an image into the overlays tab, uh, overlays window rather, it will appear up here in show in all scenes. So we do want it to show in all scenes, but we don't want it at the top of everything else because this is currently, as you can see, covering up everything. <laughs> so what we want to do is just drag this from here all the way down into the show in background. So I'm going to drag that down there. So now it's in the background. And now you can see if I just come out of demo mode, we've got something that looks a little bit similar to we might have created before and to what we might have created before in something like Keynote, where we have like an image in the background and then we put the space for where our, 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 our desktop screen sharing is going to be and a space for where our camera is going to be. And then we make a transparency through those particular parts and then we lay this over the top and it sort of gives us this border effect. But as you can see, I've now got this created just in Ecamm by having a, an image in the background. And I could actually just say, well, actually, I want this over this side this time. Uh, and you can see how easy it is now to just make these exactly as we want them. Or maybe we might say, well, OK, then we've got a guest in now. So I'm just going to hold down Alt and drag to uh, duplicate that. And let's say I'm going to add a guest in. So here, instead of that, I'm going to add guest number one. Uh, and in fact, maybe we've got uh, three guests in. So something like this. So now if I was using interview mode, then my uh, two guests, rather three people, two guests would be like that. Uh, and then perhaps I could actually just resize this, or maybe I want to just crop in on a particular part of this, the uh, scene and then drag that like that. And so you can see how basically quite quickly we can create a, a scene uh, just from having a background image um, that looks something like we would have had to have done previously with graphical overlays in a separate editor and then brought them in. And it just makes it so much easier to change all of these things on the fly. The other thing is it also makes it easy to make uh, uh, animated backgrounds as well. So what I've got here is as well as this image that I've uh, I've, I've added as the background image. I've also got a looping video. Now I've mentioned this several times before, but if you go to pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S, you can download, uh, just search for abstract background loop uh, and then go in the video section and there is a whole series of uh, videos that you can use in there. So this is one that I just grabbed at random. So I'm going to drag this and drop it in. Now when you drag it and drop it in, uh, let me just come back to my screen sharing a minute, my demo mode rather. Uh, I've just dragged and dropped that over onto the overlays and it's saying do I want to add it as an animated overlay or play full screen with uh, audio well we want to add as an animated overlay so I'm going to add that in there this is what I've got as my background and now I'm going to come to the little down arrow here at the bottom select that and say that we want to when it's finished we want it to loop so now when it finishes it will just keep looping around like that. So now we've got that as a loop going on in the background. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this side again and move it from showing current scene into the background. So there we've now got this going on in the back of our scene. Uh, I'm not sure whether you want to have that or not, but it's just to show an example of how we can now create a whole series of scenes over the top of some sort of background. You could have created your own animation or you might be uh, might just download one from Pexels or somewhere else from whatever stock video footage site you want to use. But anyway, that is what we've got. So how do we now uh, go to use this template that I've created? Because I haven't actually introduced it yet, have I? So let me just come and create a uh, new scene. In fact, I'm just going to create a completely new scene. Uh, there we go. That's a bit harsh, isn't it? My green screen. So let me take that off. 
I'll uh, put my usual background on. <laughs> and the source for this at the moment is camera. So I'm going to change that to uh, blank. Uh, we've still got this running in the background. So I'm just going to hide that one. And I'm also going to hide this one because now I'm going to show you the template that I've created. In fact, before I show you the template, let me just add in a camera overlay because there's something else I want to show you. And I'm going to just take these off, these corner radiuses off and the border off. So when you've got uh, some sort of element, some sort of overlay on the uh, the screen in Ecamm Live, there are a few little alignment tools that they uh, they give you that uh, help you with getting things in the right place. So if, as I move this towards the center, you'll notice that it is sort of snapped to this vertical line that is showing me that it's on the center. If I keep moving across, I should hit a uh, one about a quarter distance. There you go. There's that one. And if I move a bit further across, then there should be a little bounding box that appears. There we go. I've just hit it. Uh, let me just take off the UI for a moment. You can see that light blue box that's going all the way around. So that you will sort of snap to that at each uh, on each side. And if you go to the top corner, you can snap to it there or you can snap to the bottom corner. So it's just a little guide that helps you get things aligned and uh, leave that little border around the outside. There's also obviously uh, one. I say obviously <laughs> there is one in the uh, the the horizontal plane as well. So here you can see that I know that this is dead center and I can uh, basically expand this out if I want and just get it all lined up. So we have got that element of, um, uh, of alignment that we can do. Um, but what I wanted to do was create something that gave me a little bit more flexibility in terms of where I position things, given that we are going to be adding on uh, a lot more elements. So what I created was this lay uh, layout template. So if I come down to the bottom here, it's this one, scene layout template. Now I'll leave a link down below where you can go and grab a copy of this. And I'm just going to drag it in uh, and I'm going to put it in the background again. So that is basically the uh, template that I've created. Now what I've done is these outermost white lines here, so around here, this one and this one, this basically matches up with the bounding box that we have already in Ecamm Live, the one that I just showed you. So if I move my thing up to the corner, this is basically matching that, uh, that bounding box that you already snapped to. Then what I've done is I've sort of split this up. So the white lines split the screen up into essentially quarters in the horizontal and the vertical. Um, but it's not exactly uh, quarters because I have actually also left a gap. And the idea with this is that basically I can put something here like this. I can drag this corner and put it over that box. I just need to change the aspect ratio of this a moment to be custom. Otherwise it will try and keep that 16 by nine. So uh, in fact, let me say that I'm gonna bring this here. So what you can see is this is basically, uh, I'm using sort of half of the height and I'm using a quarter of the width, but I've left gaps for the, uh, the you know, the sort of buffer between them. Um, the other thing that I've done here actually is it's not quite split in the same way in the horizontal and vertical axis, because you can see how uh, I have got the same sort of bounding box at the top and the, uh, the side, but then I've actually also sort of doubled the width of it at the side, because I just think that when you have your uh, camera uh, in the, or your shot in the middle, looks a little bit better to have that extra bit of a buffer at the side compared to the top and the bottom. Um, so then we've got these sort of four equally spaced uh, white uh, boxes. And that allows me to basically just grab this one. And if I hold down option, I can drag that over and hold it over that position. And then I could drag it over here to do uh, this one. And then I can drag it over here again. And so now I've got four duplicate uh, shots. Now, why would I want four? Well, obviously, <laughs> hopefully it's obvious. I can now just come into here and change that to be guest number one, uh, guest number two, uh, somewhere. Oh, I pressed the wrong one. <laughs> it always helps to hit, hit the right button. Uh, and then here we've got guest number three. Uh, so there we go. I've just created a layout pretty quickly where we've got four equally spaced uh, boxes uh, and they've all got the same uh, buffer between them. Now, what I should have done, actually, if I'd been a little bit more clever <laughs> and uh, not rushing ahead is actually put the border on these uh, from the outset. So what I'll do is I'll actually just do this again in a moment anyway, uh, and I will have actually put the, the correct border on it because if I put the border on this first, so if I change this to 50, uh, by the way, one of my feature requests for the, uh, the beta is going to be the ability to copy the style of one overlay and apply it to another. 
Uh, that's currently not there, but <laughs> it would be a good feature. So now let me just delete these ones. Uh, whoops, like that. And in fact, for a three up, what I would probably have, uh, for a four up rather, uh, I would probably, let's uh, let's resize this one a minute. I'm gonna create this one as a sort of tool like that. And then I'm going to copy it across like this. And then this one, I'm gonna copy to there. And it makes it a lot easier to just sort of eyeball it because you know from the outset how, how, uh, how wide it needs to be when you're setting the first one. And then I can come in here, I can change that to be the uh, guest number one. Change, whoops, didn't need to do that. Change this to be guest number two. And change this to be guest number three. And that leaves me some space at the bottom to have my uh, sort of lower thirds or my live stream, for example. I do have something that's permanently at the bottom, uh, giving the link for people to call in and stuff like that. And it also leaves a space uh, for comments and things like that if people want to leave uh, leave comments. So you would have your sort of comment box popping up down here. And then once you've set it up, you simply come to here and you toggle the screen layout uh, template off. And then we could put our little balloons back if we really wanted <laughs> like that. So now we've got a scene that's all uh, perfectly laid out. You'll notice that the gaps between everything is all perfect. Uh, I mean, if you wanted, if you were going to do a little bit of a screen share or something like that just for a particular window, in fact, let's just do this for the hell of it. Uh, I'm going to just toggle my screen layout template on. Let's just say I want to share this window down here. Because I can see the uh, the sort of gaps between all of these uh, these sort of elements, or the, the, the gaps are part of the template, if I just click on screen sharing now, we might want to say, okay, well, let's put this one down here and then let's expand it over like this. In fact, let me just get the cropping correct first. <laughs> that would help. Let me come in and crop in on this. And then I'll crop in on this part like that. And then I'll just expand it out. And then what we might want to do is just crop in from the top to get it like that. I mean, that's a bit of a bad example because I probably wouldn't make it that small or in that position. And then <laughs> we can just uh, expand the actual window itself uh, to get it to fit. This is the uh, the drawback, by the way, of not actually planning these videos in advance because it means <laughs> demonstrations like this don't always go the way that they're supposed to when I just go off, off the cuff sort of thing. But there you go. That is how you can basically add it in. The point I'm trying to make, though, is that the template allows you, if I just toggle off my little background for a moment and come out of... Uh, screen sharing and then or demo mode and I'll toggle that off you can see how the basically all of the gaps and everything just look neat and aligned and if I turn the background back on then it just looks um, uh, a, lo a lot more crisp and sharp and everything in the right place and what this means is if you do want to create these scenes sort of on the fly as you are um, doing a live stream or something like that then you can come into uh, preview mode and then I've actually got a button on my stream deck now which toggles on this uh, this particular layout so that then I can come into preview mode, I can make all my changes, toggle the, 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 the template on uh, and then toggle it off again and send the, uh, the changes to be live. So what I'm going to do now though is I am actually just going to uh, turn this background off because it will apply to all of the uh, the scenes. So we can always just turn it on once we're finished. And I'm just going to make a few different scenes and show you a few sample layouts that uh, you might want to do with this. And I'm actually going to come back to this main scene. Uh, I'm just going to fix this one because my main scene would normally just be my uh, camera. So I'm going to pull this up to here, take it over to this side and then drag it down to the bottom like that. Get it lined up so that is in the right place. And then we've got the going to leave the radius as 50 and then I'm going to use the uh, border width is uh, 5. I've got to come back into my demo mode if I'm going to show you this, haven't I? <laughs> so uh, I've got my uh, radius there, my border width. Uh, all we've got in this scene on the uh, the scenes uh, window <laughs> is we've just got that. We've just got the camera overlay. So that's what we want. So let's say I'm going to create uh, another scene. I'm going to come to my main here. I'll just go to duplicate. And then let's call this one uh, screen sharing. Screen share um, left. So I have, depending on which part of the screen I'm actually sharing, I have either my picture on the right or the left hand side. So uh, this one, I would say, let me bring this over to this side. You might want to put this, uh, let's say we're going to have this one up here. 
be a full um, sort of half width like that. And then I'll add a screen sharing overlay over here. Now, obviously, there is a specific aspect ratio of your screen. So there will be instances where it's just a case of this is whatever size it is. And that's uh, <laughs> that's the way it is. So like this one here, because it's 16 by 9, if I line it up with the uh, the line at the top and the line at the bottom like that, uh, and then as I bring it down like that, it is, uh, we've got the same border width now that should just fit perfectly in there. And then you've got space for comments or things like that in the uh, in the bottom. Uh, so you could have it like that, but I tend to actually share more of my uh, screen like or a specific portion of my screen. So you might want to just do something like this and crop into a specific portion of the screen. So let's say I've got this up here and then I cropped into that particular aspect, that particular portion of the screen. Oops, where's that window gone? Like that. And just make that a little bit bigger. So you could... Uh, do something like that so that it's uh, taking up the uh, the full screen. So if that's screen sharing with me on the left, then I could just duplicate that. And let's call this screen share right. Uh, move this over to the other side. Obviously, this is all just going to fit perfectly because it's just an exact duplicate onto the other side. And I'm just lining it up with these uh, the lines. And then I'm going to create one that's basically uh, two guests, or me and one guest rather. So in fact, I'll come into this one that I created, this uh, scene that we've just created here. That was, uh, I'll get rid of that screen share element at the bottom. Uh, and now I've got the alignment slightly out on those. Must have uh, knocked it out of alignment somehow. Uh, so what I'll do here is if I uh, just duplicate this one, this one is the four up. So let me uh, duplicate that and create a three up. So the three up, if I just delete guests, guest three from there, and then we're going to use instead of the uh, the, the the quarter markers, which are the uh, the white lines, the red one is basically splitting things up into thirds. So if I create uh, one like this, I can just drag this across uh, like that, and then this one will align up with this little red line here for this third and then drag this one across to here. And then this one will drag across to here. So now we've got three that are perfectly sized and with gaps between them that are all equal. But that one needs to be just across a little bit. And then the other one that I'd need to have is a two up. So again, I'm just assuming that I've got a space at the bottom for a long lower third and uh, comments. But equally, if you only just have comments coming in and you've not got another lower third, in fact, let's just do this as an example. Let's say you want space for comments at the bottom, then you just do something like that. Drag them down to that line. And then I'll do one for a two up which is going to be the same thing, obviously, isn't it? <laughs> but just for completeness, like that. Uh, so I've just duplicated that. So I'm going to delete guest number two out of this one now. And then we've just got me and one other guest. Like that. And then I'll uh, do another one, just in case you're using the full capability of Ecamm Live and you've got uh, four guests and yourself. So in that case, what you might want to do is uh, let's just duplicate this and call this five up. So I'm going to move guest number one over here. And let's think about the best way to do this. We could make this one into thirds at the top like that. And obviously the host front and center, <laughs> uh, like that. And then we could add another one, guest number two. So whoops, Daisy, I've uh, moved it too far over, but never mind. You can see the line, so we can clearly see where it's supposed to go. Drag this one over to this side now, and then let's change this to be guest number two. And then we'll take this one and drag it down here. So we're down at the bottom now. And then this one could be guest number three. 
And as you can see, the, the lines just make it really easy to set everything exactly where you need it. And then this one just obviously duplicate across and make the other one like that. Uh, another couple of uh, scenes that you might want to consider if I just come and create another one is maybe you're doing screen sharing. So uh, what I'll do is I'll start with this screen sharing one here. Let's say uh, that one. So let me just uh, duplicate this. In fact, I'll start with a completely fresh one. Let me take this one with, uh, let me take this two up as the starting point, duplicate that, and I'll call this two up screen share. So what I'm going to do with this one is I want to have a screen sharing, um, but we may want to have our, um, our pictures over on the other side, uh, our camera overlays rather on the other side. Uh, so what I've done here is in case you want to have uh, squares, these dotted lines basically correspond to uh, the, the horizontal lines here. So uh, it's probably easier if I just show you what I mean by that. <laughs> so I'm just going to put myself in a tiny little window here. <laughs> you can see that we've got this uh, this quarter line at the bottom down here. Well, this dotted white line is basically the same size as that. So that's if you want to make a square. Uh, so let me just delete this one. That would mean that if you were going to have four people all talking about something that you were sharing the screen, then you could just drag these down like this. And let's change that to be guest number three. This one, guest number four. Uh, two. <laughs> I can't count down, evidently. <laughs> uh, you get the picture. It can be whoever you want, obviously. <laughs> Guess number one. And then what we might have is we might have our screen sharing overlay as a big overlay uh, coming up here. And so it'd line up with the other dotted white line in that case. Uh, and then we can expand it down. And yeah, it could either be that you could either fix it by the width or you might want to uh, actually shrink it so that it will um, fit perfectly. So you might want to cut it off, cut off part of the screen sharing like this. Uh, and then hold down the option like that. So there we've got a scene that is basically got our four, three guests and our host like that. Uh, and then obviously the point of all of this is that once I just get rid of my uh, background or my, uh, uh, my template uh, and then switch on my background, if we do want that to, that particular background we've now in really you know i could have done this a lot quicker if i wasn't trying to talk and count at the same time <laughs> but we've basically got our main scene uh we've got our screen sharing screen sharing on the other side uh we've got our four up three up two up uh two up uh, or four up plus screen sharing um and then the five up uh just for total completeness let me just do one more as well uh, because I have put those uh, lines on there. So it's a shame not to demonstrate them. So this one is four up. Uh, just duplicate this. Duplicate this one. And I'll call this one, uh, let's say three. And then, yeah, all I wanted to show you <laughs> was basically the fact that we have got these uh, these red lines as well. So these are the thirds. So if I was to just expand this out to uh, to here, then this is a square. And then we could just have, if we've just got two guests, obviously if you've got, uh, if you just got you and one other person, then you could just use the half one. <laughs> There's not a lot to this. I'm, I feel like I'm just going overboard a little bit, but it's just to point out how quickly you can make a series of, uh, of overlays that don't require you to have any graphical overlays at all. It's just all done in Ecamm and all you need is this one template, which I'll be leaving a link to for you to download. Uh, and then you've got an easy way to make a set of nice looking, well proportioned uh, scenes in Ecamm Live. Now, what I'm also thinking about doing is creating a few of these as, uh, as profiles, and then you'd just be able to actually just download the whole profile instead. Not quite got that spacing right. I shouldn't have, uh, I was a bit trigger happy on copying that because it wasn't quite aligned with the uh, the red lines there, was it? It was a couple of pixels off. <laughs> so uh, let's have a look at that again. Let me turn that background off. Obviously, it could just be on my uh, my image background instead. And let me come on to my full screen so you get the full effect. So there you go. I've got my image background and I can just cycle up through my different scenes like that. Um, or I can actually toggle on my, uh, my little... Um, 
animated one and then there we go we've got our scenes all set up like that so that is all i wanted to show you i should have created a little end scene in this really shouldn't i uh, so i haven't got an end scene today <laughs> so uh, that is all i've got to show you but uh, yeah i will leave a link down below to uh, where you can get that you just need to go to my website and then there'll be a little thing for you to click uh, to uh, to download the file and then yeah just drag it in and add in whatever background you want and use it to your heart's content uh, and if you uh, find it useful or if you found any layout formats that should be included in it then do let me know in the comments as well so if you think oh that's that's all very well but what about this or that then uh, do let me know about those in the comments as well and as always if you found it useful then <laughs> leave a like and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and uh, yeah do leave a comment i really love getting comments it's one of the uh, joys of uh, making these videos is getting all the feedback from everyone so uh, that's all for me there are great more, more great videos coming up right now though so uh, they'll be somewhere in fact i can just choose can't i where they're going to be where should they be let me think i'll put a playlist up here <laughs> and i'll put a video up uh, here and i'll put a subscribe button there <laughs> let's see if i can actually do that now so have a great day and uh, yeah there we go